Tana Koto, no mai hairi mai. Welcome to Newsroom. Newsroom, of course, is where our panel at QTV comments on various things that have been happening in the news, both local and around the world. Tonight, we welcome to the panel Alison Young. Thank you. A regional sales manager in the region for yes. South and Otago. And, uh, of course, far furthest away from me, broadcaster Tom Conroy, who uh, might not have much to say because he doesn't often. <laughs> we'll have to see about that. <laughs> Um, actually, Tom, I'm coming to you first. Um, Oscar Pistorius, he, he's been in the news a lot. I don't think any of us really can come to terms with what he did, firing four shots through the door of a toilet, thinking that a burglar was there, um, when he hadn't checked out to see where his girlfriend or his, his partner was. Where's this thing going? It's an amazing story because, I know you touched on it last week, but in the course of a week we've had all sorts of controversy with yes. uh, policemen being taked off, taken off the case and a, a brother also in trouble on a completely separate charge. It seems to have a twist and turn every week. But what is astonishing from a media point of view is on that morning I flicked through perhaps 20 different channels. It was the first lead on every nation's news and their sports news. So it led every bulletin. It was the first story on. Now this guy is not a superstar. He is not Usain Bolt. He is not the be not Tiger Woods. He's not the best ever in the world. He just had that unique um, situation where he fought his way into able-bodied athletes, uh, athletics, and achieved reasonable success. Uh, but he's not a superstar athlete. But because of that profile, suddenly he was on the front page everywhere, which was uh, astonishing. The other downside to that is social media having a field day with jokes, as you can imagine. Oh yes. With his situation, oh, no. um, <laughs> most of them are quite tasteless, oh, oh, but some of them are mm. sort of funny. Uh, but it's all about timing, isn't it? But what you feel sorry for is the family of the woman that's been killed. It's yeah. dreadful. Um, yeah, it they're getting exposed in a most horrible fashion. People laughing at the situation, thinking it's amusing because it's a circus now. It's an absolute circus. The court situation's a circus, isn't it? But wasn't he a superstar in South Africa? See, I think he had that superstar status. In South Africa, uh, yeah. perhaps, but not and in New Zealand. No, not in New Zealand. Or well, France or Russia. Oh, I don't know. He was pretty good at the Olympics I think yeah. but you know the thing about it is that South Africa have no jury system they have a magistrate that you know oversees everything and and for Oscar Pistorius to get a four-day bail hearing is just incredible I mean you know most bail hearings wouldn't even reach half a day and if you were poor and black you'd get 20 minutes right. but he gets you know four days I mean what's with that um, they said he had no, he was no flight risk. Um, he was no danger to the public. He was um, no cause of you know any disruption socially. And the magistrate actually praised him on his um, in attention to detail. Do you, do you think we're seeing statement. bias right incredible. from the word go? Oh, I unbelievable. Think a little bit about the timing, and I'm not defending the way they've done it because I think yeah, yeah it was <laughs> special treatment. There's no way of of uh, pretending otherwise. Is that they had to manage a circus. In itself, the thousands of people in the media, the thousands of interest, and it did make it a slightly different case. So mm. the actual mechanism may have taken longer. But uh, as you say, giving him any credit whatsoever, when he's already admitted to shooting it, <laughs> for whatever reason, he's yeah. killed someone um, by a complete misjudgment. That's the absolute best case he's got. And, and what's mm. with that cop that is on seven man manslaughter charges? He's on seven. Now, I think he. Why was he still working? Why was he still. If he was. He's only accused. Uh, okay, you know, he, and, and the story of that is something he hasn't he had a bail a, hearing yet. No, he probably hasn't. He chased a bus and shot randomly and yeah. hit some people. He, yeah. A lot of accidents yeah. happen in South Africa with guns, yes. don't they? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, and, and I heard today, I read today that um, that the witness eyewitness account mm. there was arguing and yelling, um, at, you know, for hours before the shooting, and that there were 17 minutes between the first shot and the second shot. Did you? Hear I didn't hear that? about the time okay. zone. Seventeen no, minutes no. is what the eyewitnesses said. So, so is, that is pretty amazing. It's very dodgy. The we've, whole thing. We've now got the um, Andre Pretorius, president of the Professional Firearm Trainers Council, coming out and saying, "Hey, this isn't good enough in South Africa. You know, we mm. have got stringent firearm laws. They shouldn't have had the firearm. It was against all the rules. Mm. Oh, so really? this isn't okay. going to go down well for the guy. He was also mm. in a secure compound of some mm. note, yes. wasn't he? He's not a poor man, uh, obviously, so they, he's, he's already in a protected environment. Yes. So the chances of an intruder, he should yeah. have at least had a little second think about it. Well, he says, this guy states, quote, there is no situation in South Africa that allows a person to shoot at a threat that is not identified. Mm. Pretorius added, firing multiple shots, it makes it much that much Worse, it could have been a minor, a 15-year-old kid, a 12-year-old kid breaking in to get food. Mm. So it seems mm. like 
There's somebody in my bathroom. I'm not totally sure it is. I don't think they'll be there. Therefore, I assassinate them. You know, that's really what it boiled down to, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but also, who locks the door in the middle of the night? That's right, yeah. You know, when you get up and go to the loo, do well, you lock the door? Well, uh, burglars I mean, you know, you only lock the door if you're absolutely terrified of your mental boyfriend that's going to shoot you. That's right. Or, I would say. I'm not saying anything to do with the door locking, but if you were an intruder with a gun, how are you going to identify him through a door? Excuse me, have you got a gun? Yeah, that's you, right. And lock yeah, yourself oh, in. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, so <laughs> the identification one, there's an argument there. You say, mm. well, how would I have determined without perhaps being killed first So myself. if I opened the door defending, and he had a gun, I might have been shot first. Is Correct. that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Mm. Saying, that's saying that's how does he identify? That's a defence. Identify. But the locked door is, is a giveaway. It is. It's the is giveaway. It, it and is, the argument. You know, okay, Tom, what's your predictions for the case? What's what's going to be the outcome of it? What's the judge going to say in the end? He'll, he'll, I, I don't know, but yeah. I think he'll get a lesser charge than the maximum. Yes. There'll be some sort of defence there, um, there'll be something for, because he's sorry, mm -hmm. they'll add something in there. But I, I, he's going he's to get a little bit of special treatment. He won't avoid jail time, no. I don't think there's anything, because he's not denying the fact that he killed someone. Mm. So, so it's probably manslaughter man rather than premeditated murder. One instead of manslaughter, four or whatever, it'll be yeah. one of the manslaughters, but I think it'll probably be the lesser of them, of the charges. But at whatever he gets, if it's not the maximum, it'll always be because he's a star, mm -hmm. it, rather than the assessment, I don't, whether that's the case or not. That's how mm. it'll be perceived. Isn't it interesting mm. how, I think we all agree on this, how we mm. can more or less predict it because we see the forces that are in operation. Mm. You know, mm. the fact that he's such an important person, the fact that he's white, but there has to be some, uh, it has to be taken into account the fact that another important person is dead. Um, mm. It's almost like a political thing. You do get a situation, famous people like Earl Lumpet are treated differently mm. simply because they live a different life than you and I. They don't um, act differently though. They're they still beating act, up their wives they, and shooting them. And, correct, they don't. You know, and the domestic violence in South Africa is absolutely horrendous. You know, there's yes. a woman raped every four minutes in South Africa. It's a terrible situation. Mm -hmm. It's a shocking place. Right. But you know. the difference is you and I do this, our life isn't played out in front of millions of people and you're not prejudged right. in case. Yes. So you've got yes. to sort of balance that off a little bit. Yeah, absolutely um, right. And you raised the question, a very good question, Alison, saying that if it was a, a, a young black guy, we wouldn't be talking about it now, would we? No. We wouldn't even know the case even existed. That's no. this complete disparity it, between... There probably yeah. are already in progress, would I be correct in saying, because I know you lived in South Africa at one stage. Did you feel safe? Uh, no, no. And I was there right before the... Um, it will, in 1985, before yes. all the laws changed and things. And um, no, I don't think anyone was safe. Mm -hmm. And actually, I worked very closely with a girl um, from South Africa uh, a few years ago in Christchurch, and she used to travel with a gun in her car, um, pointed at the door for her car for carjacking. Mm. So it's mm. not a it's yeah. not a good don't place to be. Lights, no, so we, don't stop at the lights. In some respects, we don't understand, mm. you know, no, the, the atmosphere of the country. Yeah. The fact, I guess, that it was a gated compound says something mm. as well. Mm, that's right. Because yes. we're talking about not we're not talking about apartheid changes. We're talking about poverty yeah. uh, causing a lot of those things. You know, they fix some parts of their society, yeah. but the crime, which has been prevalent for years and years, continues as, as a mm. threat. But uh, having said that, I, I had friends who went over on a tour following a, the All Blacks, and they went to all sorts of areas in poverty, and they said mm. at no time did they ever feel threatened or okay. unsafe, maybe a hotel one night there, were, there was some dodgy things outside, but they didn't actually feel, but there was a group of them mm. and maybe that was different. But perhaps there's a little bit of progress, but obviously not enough of that sort of thing is still yeah. happening. Yeah. But the yeah. attitudes are changing. Uh, we were just talking briefly before we went on air about um, you know, breaking down those things. A new generation now since Zapato has been stopped. Mm. There's a case where there's a great cricketer they've got called Amla, Hashim Amla, who is um, of Asian origin, of, obviously. There were people in the crowd dressed up as them in respect to his ability. Brilliant. Wow, now this nice. is not only yeah. <laughs> 10 years ago, 15 mm. years ago, he wouldn't have been allowed on the team. Yeah, now yeah. you've got young people who just don't know about the past. Exactly. Yes. That's what it is. Yes. And, and it's yes. always said it takes a generation at least to sort of bleed oh, it out, yeah. isn't it? At least. Our attitudes uh, grow up from young. Mm. They are very difficult to change once they're ingrained when we're older. Mm. And so if those ones grow mm. up with new attitudes, perhaps their kids will grow up with even better attitudes. Well, there's, a, there's a famous black lady who, who went through this horrible process where she was redefined as her colour from white to black to coloured because every, every year they redefined them at the end of the year as to what you were, how terrible that was. Mm. And he, she changed because her parents were white and she was black. There was all sorts of connotations. She goes around now to schools lecturing on 
what apartheid was like, to tell mm. the kids that don't forget so we don't actually know. did this terrible thing and mm. we treated these people this way. Because they just, and, and they're getting, we heard questions from the floor. Unbelievable that parents had never even told them that this even happened. It's like they pretended it didn't happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a good. Oh, I thought that was a good process. Yeah, that they, yeah. it's like you should, the Germans should never be forgotten about. You know, uh, the kids should never be mm -hmm. not told about the horrors mm -hmm. that were inflicted by their their parents and grandparents. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. stick with sport for a minute, Tom, and go to another fallen sportsman, um, Ben Barber. Mm. and uh, tremendous performance, 2012. The guy was an icon, really, Indigenous, Indigenous Australian who's really a real example to other Indigenous Australians. And now this has happened. But he does seem to have some support. Absolutely, mm. and I think that's part of the problem. You say he's an example, he's a role model. Suddenly he's been thrust into this, which he, into this limelight in this in this coveted role on on the on the pedestal. That's the bit he's not prepared for. Mm. He's prepared to go out and play the greatest football ever. What do they do to pre prepare them? Because they they certainly wrap themselves around these young guys when they get into crisis. Mm. You know, like Zach Guilford mm. and after after yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah, after. Yeah. So what are they doing beforehand to make sure that these young guys that all of a sudden they've hit fame, they've hit fortune. They've got girls, drugs, mm. cars. I mean, they've got everything. I blame the girls. No, <laughs> no, no. Right. Don't blame the girls. No, no. But, you know, what, what are they doing? Oh, really? I think a part of the problem is, is you don't know who's going to be a star. Like, here you have... Uh, okay. They made him a star, though. They put his profile up to only after his no, Only status. after, though, you remember? Because they put all these yes. people on the field, the 150 players a year that go on the field, and you have no idea that this young guy, one of 50 young debutants in, in the pack, springs up because suddenly he scores three tries, then he scores another three tries, then he scores another Got three tries. Got a hat-trick, didn't he? Mm. Or whatever happens, and suddenly, oh, we, who, we, who, oh, he's a star. So how, you can't go and prepare everyone on the basis that they might be a star. Okay, so as soon as they get the hat-trick. <laughs> well, that's it. When do you step in? And also, a lot yeah. of his teammates, he played for the Indigenous Australians two weeks ago, scored three tries, absolutely brilliant. Mm. He asked his coach, Laurie Daly, who was a very, very experienced, fantastic player and coach of his own regard, he had no idea he had any problems. No idea. Oh, really? So ha if you don't know, but he's yeah. got a group. Of, apparently, this guy's got a group of people who are, you know, um, huge party. Oh, I wrote them guys. down. They're What's the they Epic Bender crew, and it's he's got an EBC tattooed on his stomach. And I okay. saw that today That's on the. It's not a good internet. sign about your approach. That is not is it? a good sign, no. and it's not a good sign about your mates either. If they're prepared to, you know, um, not support him and his success, if they're pre prepared to bring mm. him down to their level. Um, that's bad news. Well, the, the trouble mm. is the mates you bring to the game can cause you the trouble because you suddenly you've got money, you can shout the beers, yeah, exactly. you know, and they want to yeah. stay your mates. That it's not actually your rugby league mates who you haven't actually formed a bond with because you've just turned up. He's only 18. He, you go into a bunch of guys. You've got to earn your, earn your, earn your, earn your mates. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but it, with you, you bring your old habits and your old mates, and they're the ones that often lead them astray. I really wonder... Because I've got friends. I wonder, thinking about this, is this something the NR NRL's really got to have a look at? They've got to say, we're bringing these young guys through. They need to have some sort of regime. This can happen. They've got to acknowledge this can happen. Instantly they're in there. We have got to take care of them. We've more or less got to take them over because okay. if we don't, we're going to lose them, you know, for a period of time. And immediately you say, righto, righto fella, take a lot of his time, have um, buddies there who look after them, um, all kinds of measures in place to prevent this happening. I think they do, and they have to do that in every sport code yeah. as well. It's not just the NRL, but it was interesting you say that his coach, was it his coach who had yeah, no it, idea? Yeah. In that, that environment, yeah, he, he the, couldn't, the, it wasn't apparent. So, yeah. Yeah. so obviously when he turns up to work, he does work, mm. the, mm. the footballer. But I think they should get to know, if they're really good leaders, they should get to know a little bit more about them. A lot more life about coaching's them, needed, you know. isn't it, Elsa? It is, yeah, it is. Yeah. And that's you don't want too much hand-holding, these are for Oh, boys. come on. <laughs> <laughs> don't up, you know. Clearly you do, that, yeah. clearly you do. <laughs> we've, we've, you know, there's been examples in rugby and cricket that we all know about we in, do. in recent yeah. times. Mm. Yeah. But sometimes yeah. it may not be fixable. Uh, it may not be easily fixable. Because are you saying they have to crash? Well, no, I'm saying that um, they're going to go back into that environment. It's okay. not like you can't take to one side and do your job quietly on the side while we help you. These people are either perform in the limelight or they're not performing because they're not getting the opportunity. And you don't want to deny them that. Mm -hmm. So um, it's about how do you work to the process, you know, work through the process and still get them back to where they are, where they can earn all that. Because often in these cases, mm. these guys, the only way they earn money is by playing cricket and rugby and rugby league. Yeah. And their prospects afterwards aren't The great. days of plan B are not so much there, you know, they have, they're not, haven't got the time to get there 
BCOM degrees in their, you know, their backup plan mm. because they're, they're thrust into the limelight so early now, so young. And they're not knocking they down the doors of universities, these fellas, some no, of them. You know. they, well, they've got no. some great talent. Some and of them are, but, you know. Help them use yeah. their talent to earn their money, Thomas, but still look after them outside. Is mm. that comment you just made, is that, does that pertain more to league than any other sport? Um, I mean, in, in Britain, we've seen that a lot of the rugby players traditionally came out of universities. And yeah. you know, you're talking about class system. Yes, you're talking about I am. rugby played by the not yeah. not necessarily because the educator any well behaved yeah. than anyone no, else's. No, they're not. I can do it. <laughs> they corporate are. Crime really? And, really? Yeah, exactly. Worst <laughs> behaved with intelligence. Yes, we not. are just talking about sport here, aren't we? Well, no, we're not actually. <laughs> but um, you see, rugby league they tend to be from a poorer background mm. uh, in in. You know, in a lot of the society, New Zealand and in Australia, so there's, you know, they're coming from further, they're coming from further back in the social set to enrichment, mm -hmm. the leap. Um, rugby, it's a little bit different, as I say, and, and especially in the UK, it's a bit more leaders. But soccer is this trouble with soccer. Yes. I can yeah. show you, Barton. There's a list of soccer players who've gone off the rails. But rugby mm -hmm. league do have a sort of a, perhaps the most checkered history with the binge drinking and the. You know, woman at the hotels, and they've had a few things, but they have slowly worked their way through it. But um, it's an it's an ensconced culture, uh, which mm. is just no longer socially acceptable, yeah. and it's going to take a while to wheedle out. And I guess, just reflecting on what you said there, that there's a, a different type of um, player really uh, coming from a different background takes up league. We're thinking about one guy who's gone off the rails. Mm. And we've got to acknowledge too, and I, I, I saw a look in your eye there, Alison, the the ones that league have picked up. And it's changed their lives, mm -hmm. you know, that they had nothing to do. They, the, the game has, has become very important to them, changed their lives. We've got a lot of young people rescued. And, mm -hmm. But in the news, we only kind of see the one who goes off the rails, don't we? I know, we? I know, because there's so many that do so well, mm -hmm. yeah. know, don't they? They're just, and I'm sure there's yeah. that many success stories, wouldn't it's it be? the expression, yeah. kids in sport stay out of court. They do. You know, and so yes. that, again, applies to a lot of, I know a lot of people <laughs> that, I, that I grew up with, that I, you know, that that aggression could have been carried out in a very different manner. Mm -hmm. exactly. Now, boxing saved a lot of people, even dubious sport that can be <laughs> yeah. at some stage. <laughs> That's right. But it has actually yeah. got a lot of people I know to the point where they can punch a bag instead of something else. Exactly, uh, and mm -hmm. that's that's great. A so very disciplined sport to a lot of people don't realise. Mm -hmm. You make a very good point. We always talk about the Bimbabas, but there were the, of the people that started that they did mm, either look yes, after. Yes. Yeah. There, yeah. There's 40 out of the 60 perhaps uh, uh, really great well. citizens. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and not that it, mm. he's necessarily, it doesn't sound like he's hurt anyone else. No. It just himself. He's just gambled his money and drunk yep. excessively because it's this, this is what his mates do. We're going to be looking for this guy and a comeback. He's a great player. I think they will bring him back. I think it won't be too long mm. before they get him sorted out. Yeah. He's just too much of a superstar to let go. It's yep. getting through yeah. that first hurdle when yep. he comes back because it'll be huge yeah. publicity the day he comes back. The same mm. with. So that's Jesse Ryder and yeah. Zach Guilford when they go yeah. back to their top status. But if they can outlive it for a couple of weeks and mm. not retrench and go back to their habits, they'll kick on. They need right. to talk to Jimmy Cowan. That's who they need to talk to. Yeah. Well, who did <laughs> Jimmy Cowan talk to? And he had a few problems, which <laughs> are nothing on the scale to some no, of these guys. No, I know, guys. but he got himself that, sorted. He, Brad Thorne. Mm. And why? Because yep. Brad Thorne was, had a checkered mm. history in the exactly. early days. So mm. um, if you put them with the right people and they listen to them and yes. they, they example, then you're right. But it's just knowing the, right the problem exists. It's like when you're an alcoholic, you've got to admit it, don't you? Mm -hmm. Whereas yeah. that's what Zach's problem was. He just de is in denial, as lots of mm -hmm. alcoholics are. Eventually, he, he got to accept it, and now he's doing something about it. And he's just, oh, be, and they're really trying to get him back in the next few weeks, and I hope they do. Brilliant. Yep. Brilliant. Alison, yes. you're in the business world. Solid oh, energy. God, don't get me started on solid, solid energy. Solid energy. Yeah. <laughs> not so solid. Uh -huh. And now we've got Bill English saying that he's going to, he may have to reduce the targeted figure for the, uh, for the money he's going to make from selling these other assets as well. Mm. I think uh, May is a bit weak, isn't it? I think he'd be saying, well, I am going to have to revise it down. Are these other assets still worth the same amount of money that he thought they were as well? Uh, well, no. I mean, this is a company that um, two years ago was worth two to three billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Billion. Mm -hmm. um, now it's worth virtually nothing. And it's it's interesting that they, um, you know, when they came down to Southland and they, uh, Bill and, and Don Elder turned over that first sod all of ground. The news. You know, it was all a big big publicity. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, is it ironic that the company's worth sod all now? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> who knows? But you know, what really gets me is that um, you know someone like Don Alder, he's on a 1.1 million dollar salary plus bonuses. And in fact, that that top echelon of solid energy people um, creamed off 20 million dollars worth of bonuses in the last few mm -hmm. years. Bonuses, not their salaries. 
Um, and, and he didn't see that his own commodity, his coal that he's selling, um, that the bottom's dropped out of it in the world market, you know, 40%. And, so, yeah. and to lose $10 million a month since, you know, July, mm. and we only sort of really hear about it now, I just think, frankly, is really irresponsible. And he can just walk away, walk away, you know, golden handshake, the got whole to do thing. Well, you know, just, when they get yeah. the bonuses, no matter what. That's there, there's, is there any incentive? That's mm. a worldwide problem mm. highlighted by the banking crisis yeah. <laughs> about yes. those. Mm. And they're coming to light now how ludicrous they were mm. and they're indefensible and they're trying to defend them. Can I ask, Bill, am I correct in assuming, and I, I, I only just across the story a little bit, is that the lignite in South is still an option to pursue? They're still keen to pursue that as a way of perhaps getting out of the mine? That I don't some understand why. I mean, I must have missed something in this because uh, yeah. lignite, is a, it's, it's a dirty... No, but they've got a way of cleaning it up and that's the key. Fuel, it's it? low grade. Oh. Yeah. It's a very low grade fuel. It is. Um, they, they have said, the, the latest news that I read on, they, they said they're not shutting down their plant, whatever it is. Mm. They, they're looking to sell the farms, but they've still got access to lignite. Mm. I think they probably, what could be in their minds is, well, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, the world's short of oil this is only a temporary dip mm -hmm. and we should keep this thing up and running because it's going to come back. I'm sure that's what's there. But of course solid energy's gone down too far. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like there were some very shonky investments to lose mm -hmm. that amount of uh, capital in, yeah. uh, or capital asset in that a short amount of time. Seems well, amazing. You know, they've got a commodity that's going, that, that, that's being exported and when you don't have a commodity that's got any value add to it, mm. it's just the raw stuff out of the ground in a ship and off somewhere then you're at the mercy of the world market. Not helped by the New Zealand dollar? Oh, absolutely. The new gold. Mm. Yeah. And but, you know, the other thing that get, really gets to me is that when, when something like this happens, when, um, when there's profits, it's privatised, and when there's losses, it's nationalised. Mm. So we as the taxpayer uh, now, yes. we pick up all of this rubbish every time it falls over, but, God, if there were huge profits, would the taxpayer, would the schools get any more money? Would mm. the hospitals get any more money? You know, where does that money go? Very interesting Not comment the, by yeah. Bob Parker I heard this morning, an interview, where he's basically saying that Christchurch had been looking at selling assets, had an analysis done and said, if we borrow the money, mm -hmm. we're going to pay less, by, we're going to pay less if we take the option of borrowing the money, I'm pretty sure this is what he said, than if we sold the assets and used those. It's actually cheaper to keep the assets mm -hmm. and get the, yep. the payout from them yep. paying for the, the, the borrowings on the loan. Mm -hmm. So they've gone the other way. Yes. Uh, yeah. exactly. That's what he's saying, anyway. I mean, you can't, you know, you can only sell the family silver once, can't you? It's gone. Yeah, yeah. It's gone. And then the profit that Meridian um, and Genesis are going to make, it doesn't even, or the dividend that's going to be mm. paid back to the government, doesn't even go anywhere near the loss that they're going to have to scoop up after solid energy. I mean, it's just a, you know. Yeah. Well, crazy the exercise is interesting because today uh, the the Maori water rights yes, fell tell over, us about that. so yeah, they can now proceed to the next stage of the sale. But I just wonder, is there a, is there a passion to try and make solid energy work, or is it just to get it sellable, to get rid of it? Uh, because yeah. they're so they're so uh, determined to sell all these assets and raise the money. But who, who it's all right selling them, but who's going to buy that company on the books of it? Uh, long know, term, yeah. you could mothball it, and uh, you're right, Bill. Uh, there'll be another time in the history mm. with coal because we've got what 500 years worth of coal here. 14 billion tonnes of South mm. Rotaga. Is it for nine, 500 years, yeah. I think, of all the coal requirements of New Zealand? Something like that, I don't think. Don't surprise me. Yep. But it's hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. That one day you might mm. need to tap into it and you need to have the mechanisms there to do so. Uh, and just keep it perhaps working at its minimum and don't try and extract too many profits out of it. Or, But you have somebody has to... But to sell it, what privateer is going to want mm. a company that loses 10 million bucks a month or whatever it is a week? I mean, the, the people that are going to suffer are the, you know, the 1,200 people sitting around waiting to see if they're going to have their jobs or not. You mm. know, it's another 1,200 guys. I mean, they've got nowhere to go. What, what else is out there? Yeah, yeah. Um, and you're a coal mining uh, specialist yes. with no exactly. coal mines. Yeah. Right. On that so, rather morbid mm. note, we're Sorry. going to go to a break. Um, but stay with us and uh, try and keep cheerful because we've, we've got some more positive things to talk about afterwards. We'll see you soon. Welcome back to Newsroom, brought to you by the Insurance Brokers Alliance. Now, the Oscars. Of course, always a great feature in the world entertainment scene. Did, mm. did you um, have any thoughts about it, Alison? Did, what, I mean, did, were you expecting The Hobbit to get anything? Actually, I wasn't. Right. I wasn't surprised at all about The Hobbit. I think we 
have seen and done The Hobbit, the technology is a little bit outdated. It was amazing with Lord of the Rings, but uh, you know, apart from the fact that a lot of the people that worked on the Lord of the Rings then moved to other companies, uh, upgraded their technology and then or, or their special effects, and then mm. moved to the Hobbit, um, that probably hasn't helped them. But um, you know, how many Hobbit battles do you want to watch, really? I'm going to just do it. I don't know. Actually, the, the Hobbit, I <laughs> My thought, son was would, but <laughs> considerably better than I, I much preferred it to Lord of the Rings. I thought it was a better movie okay. because the story is better. The Lord of the Rings is a you know, a succession of ugly people having battles <laughs> for ages, but that's what the book's about. With hairy toes. With hairy toes. Yeah. Um, so in The Hobbit, though, it's still hairy toes, it's, just, uh, it's a nicer story because it's a kid's story and it's got a warmer feel to it mm. and it's a little bit more humorous and it's less mm. graphic violently. Um, and it's very well done in 3D. And I thought it was a very good movie in terms of... Uh, but because it had been surpassed and King, Lord of the Rings mm. had had all the fuss, I think they would have been reluctant to have... You know, to yeah. gone back to it. However, it by by Hobbit three, yeah. uh, I wouldn't rule it out. I wouldn't rule it out. Oh, okay. So Looking forward to that. It, it's something, <laughs> yeah. But it depends. I mean, it's a it's a taste thing if you're not really into that sort of sci-fi stuff. But it's still very well made movie. Yeah, very yeah, good. Was, yeah. And he, yeah, Peter Jackson is incredible. Yeah. There's it, no doubt he's about done that. a superb yeah. job of that. I have yeah, to say. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. Sort of it's only a hundred pages of the book. It's only a three hundred page book. Mm. And it's and I, didn't, I honestly didn't look at my watch till about two hours ten, and that wasn't out of boredom. I'm just curious. So the time oh, didn't, didn't, mm. didn't, didn't, didn't eat away at it. But yeah, the thing about the, the Academy Awards, uh, there are so many pre-awards, Golden Globes and BAFTAs and TIPS. Mm. They don't get their TIPS wrong very often. Occasionally there's a, uh, yeah. there's a surprise, but most of them were well predicted in advance. The only thing that Lincoln was an early favourite and then Argo because mm. it performed it well and the other awards sneaked through and, and actually got Best Picture. Mm. So it's funny how you get Best view. Picture and not Best Director though. How very does that rare. Work? <laughs> I mean, very rare. It's very you know, rare. Scott, it's yeah, common. Yeah, uh, it's yeah, uncommon yeah. to do that. But but yeah. if you look at the best director, they they did like Life of Pi. It's a bit of a mm. sort of fashionable story. I, I I've seen that movie and it's very. Um, I don't know if you know the story, but if you ever see the last episode of Mesh and watch Life of Pi, you'll see some similarities. Really. Uh, well, I haven't okay. seen it, so I'll look out for it because that yeah. last episode of Mesh was mm. quite poignant. It's the, the whole key thing. to understanding yeah. the movie. <clears throat> oh, really? It, it's, 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 it's the same. It's the same oh, thrust. Must, oh, but that. it is. Uh, it's very <coughs> well done in terms of the special effects are, are, are fantastic, mm. and uh, because he's, you know, he's on a boat with a tiger. I think everyone knows what the story is, yeah. yes. which is a preposterous anyway. Yeah. But, he, uh, but, it, but there's nothing wrong with the way they staged the film and made it look. Uh, it's just a story for me didn't do much, which yeah. is why I think as a movie it doesn't get very far, but as a directing uh, yes. a feat, yes. I can see why they like the way they put the story together. It's strangely enough, I hate animal cruelty in any kind, and mm. because there is some in the movie, even mm. though they're not even real animals, you still feel sorry for yeah. them. Oh, <laughs> I tell, but I suppose people cried over Bambi, didn't oh, they? Oh, absolutely. And Bambi wasn't even and real. And still do. So, but, it's um, right. so but, it's you real. know, what's with the Seth MacFarlane, who was the host? I mean, where did they get him from? Trying to be edgy, weren't they? Oh. Well, Family Guy, who you know appeals to an average age of 15 or 16, actually probably the 15s aren't supposed to watch it, mm. he was shocking. He was sexist, he was... Um, uh, he mm. was that sort of frat boy humour. He just, he wasn't good at all. Was he looking was to be the scene of the show? Well, so they, um, they it's just bought the yeah. whole tone. I mean, I didn't watch the whole thing. I've just seen snippets of it. But he just brought the whole tone down. And, you know, when you've got such a glamorous, amazing mm. event where there's gazillions of dollars worth of gowns and jewellery mm. and, and preparation gone into it, and you get some idiot up there. I think they're trying they to attract that younger audience. I think that's usually when people do that edgy stuff, they're trying to get the average age of the viewers up. They don't need any extra viewers. There are 40 million people watching yeah, exactly. on TV and another 40 What's million on the kids? net. They've got 8 million bucks. <laughs> that's right. And they've got no money to spend. Yeah. But they're always chasing that young audience. They're, they're, mm. they, they think they're losing them. And that's why they try this sort of humour. But I think the mistake they made, if they want to, not that I suggest they go that far, is they went from something that was very bland and safe, but still entertaining, Billy Crystals, all the classic ones that hosted it before, to yeah. something outrageous. And it's too big a step mm. for people to make. You need to sort of slowly work Ricky your way. Ricky he did Golden Globes and upset oh, everyone. Yeah, yeah. But his, See, his was cutting him. humour. I think he's it so wasn't. funny. Yeah, he's yeah, he was cutting. Fantastic. Not to be compared, really, oh, is it? Americans are going to miss half the jokes. <laughs> yeah. It's not well, his humour. Yeah. And he had a it's jibe true. at people, and he had a go at people at the industry, and they didn't yeah. like that, of course, because they're not very self facing humour. But this was... This is just a lot less um, yeah, subtle and just had a, had a, had a crack at the things. And I, I think they've learnt their lesson. I doubt he'll be invited back next year. 
funny but that. it attracted a lot mm. of attention. Mm. Now, one thing I would want to talk about the Academy Awards is the first time ever, unbelievably, a James Bond song has won the best original score, original song. Mm. Um, and if you think of all the songs of all time, yeah. only four others that I know of have been even nominated for a final. This is the first one. Oh. The likes of Goldfinger, Thunderball, yeah. those were Shirley Bassey numbers. They were brilliant. Yes. They never got near the place. No. They never right. got nominated. Oh, it's probably because Adele is the, you know, she's... So, Shirley Bassey was the 1960s. Tom mm, Jones, they, Mate Monroe, they had all the big artists mm. of the 60s. But in the 60s, you were up against My Fair Lady, West Side Story, all the great oh, okay. sound yeah. music. You had no mm. chance. Mm. So they didn't. So, mm. But in the 70s and 80s, things like Live and Let Die got nominated, I think, Spy Love Me, uh, a, few other, a, a couple of others, but never real chance. But mm. for her to get it, and she's the biggest selling artist over oh, the last two years. She's amazing. In the world. That's mm. a huge clue. The thing about her music is that you can sing it really loud in the car mm. when you're on your own, <laughs> <laughs> and nobody knows. It's, it's fantastic. Really key. Oh, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah, she, she is, she is talented, because she wrote yeah. that song as well as performed yeah. it. She did the whole thing, yeah. so and she said that's the height of her career. Yeah. It's a nice yeah. song. And what an amazing young woman Jennifer Lawrence is, oh, you know, brilliant. to, apart from the fact that she looked fantastic when she fell up the stairs, mm. like, you know, she even looked amazing mm. falling up the stairs, um, that she got up there so composed and, and yeah. made a funny, so funny woman, joke. Really. Oh, yeah. she's, you know, for 22, yeah, she's just incredible. There's not a lot of confidence incredible. to that, 22. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm sure yeah. you'd find it on YouTube or somewhere else, but there's a really funny thing of her being interviewed. It's like an aside I've seen table. It. I know what Jack she really Nicholson wanted to <laughs> say. <laughs> Jack Nicholson came up to her and she was gobsmacked. She just won an Academy Award. She yeah. was gobsmacked that he even spoke to her yeah. and, yes. and, and flirted with him yes. and was really. And when he went away, she was, oh, oh my God, that. Jack Nicholson. Oh, yeah. And I'm oh, thinking, oh, aren't you a movie star in your own right? But it just shows you the, the esteem. The marker yeah. for yeah. Those esteem and respect. Of those yes. top guys. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Those yeah. top guys, you know. And she, he yeah. said, I like the movie. And I think he was flirting with you too. There's an interview with her about what she really wanted to say when she fell up the stairs. Oh, was it good? No, no, it oh. wasn't. <laughs> She's very pleased she yeah. didn't say it. Yeah, she was a ridiculous <laughs> can't say it on the show, <laughs> yeah, wasn't it? It was a, it, oh, it was a huge beautiful dress. Yes. dress. The poor woman is never supposed to cut that I thing I know. Out, How so. could you? Yeah. Mm. But uh, no great surprise, and mm. Les Mis picked up three. Have mm. you seen Les Mis? No, I haven't. No, oh, I just no, I yeah, haven't. And I, I've, I've heard it's, it's excellent. Yeah. Um, and yeah, actually, there were some very strong movies overall in there, weren't there? Yeah, they spread and the awards very out. Very strong. They spread the awards yeah. out this year. Yes. Not one got six. Or there's a lot of nominations. Yes. Les Mis yes. got lots, and Lincoln got lots, but they spread it out. I yeah. always wonder about the like the Lincoln one. You set up for a win. You almost made the movie to win the Academy Awards. It's like yeah. you pick a hero. It was a safe bet, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, somebody yeah, that yeah, everyone yeah. thinks Lincoln was great, and he, had, you mm -hmm. know, he wasn't perfect, but none of us are. But he's, a, he's a, obviously a big hero for them, and one guy gets the, yes. the lead role. Daniel Day Lewis, a fine Dallas. actor. Mm -hmm. I'm not questioning his acting. Yeah. Yeah. But wow, you're off to a head start over everyone else, yeah, aren't absolutely. you? A three hour move to it. And of course, the whole movie. story about how he wouldn't go out of character, you know. And the whole time he was on there, he wouldn't go out of character. Mm. Mm. He insists mm. on being addressed as, and I can understand why. Mm. Yeah. Peter Zellis used to do that all the time. Oh, did he? If he was being Indian, he'd be in India at home. He would never talk to anyone in that. You know, Peter Sellers when oh, he was doing he his, really? Yeah, and to the point, because he, he was crazy. The guy he was, was a bit <laughs> yeah, But he would, yeah, for that whole time of the movies, he'd come home and he'd only speak Indian and act like an Indian. <laughs> and he was only <laughs> taking Fantastic. Mickey out of Indians. He wasn't, yeah. he wasn't actually an Indian. Trying to be an Indian, <laughs> so, no. So the whole so the thing, they actually live and breathe the part. You think maybe that's a little bit going out the top. No wonder yeah. you lose touch with the reality yeah. When, yeah. and you get absorbed in the part. But you don't. Mm. Particularly with Lincoln, he must have found it. Uh, he must have found the part very challenging to have to do that. I'm right. looking forward to seeing that because there is. Well, he, he was big on emancipation and freeing slaves and everything. But there was a sort of a, he levitated to that. It wasn't. Uh, he wasn't a big abolitionist to start with, and it just politically it was a good idea we to perhaps yes. have a, to take it a bit further than he'd intended. Mm. And whether they in the movie, uh, whether they make him out to be the great. Um, saviour or not, it will be interesting. I mean, it ended up getting the right result for four million people dying, but they still got the right result. In terms I don't of think I'll slavery. get past Sally Field being the flying nun. Honestly, <laughs> she was good. I, agree. I love her. I she think she's great fantastic, as a but nun. I can just see that. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, I, right, she hasn't aged she's as well. Probably. She's not quite as. Uh, 
probably isn't as oh, much surgery time. Oh, how unkind of you. Oh but she is, she is a flying nun, she'll stay. <laughs> I mean, let, let's face it, what are we really seeing when we look at these people? Are we seeing the real them or the um, oh, something that's had about half a million dollars spent on the face or whatever? But isn't yeah. it amazing that, you know, she's someone that was, you know, so um, yeah. in our face when we were children and now yeah, she's, yeah. you know, she's yeah. still going and I think that's pretty good. brilliant. It's a sign of Absolutely good actress. Yeah, who's, yeah. Yeah, those, those that can keep reinventing yeah. themselves and they have to live with oh. the fact that they had an iconic sort of part yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some get those, through that. Look at but some of those British actors, the women, you know, who've, uh, some of the oh, old ones. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, just absolutely If you see incredible. that quartet one with, you know, Maggie Smith and, yes. and, and, yeah. and Penelope Wharton, and all those others, yes. that are great actresses, and you, um, yeah, you just sort of appreciate how, how good they were. Exactly. We're going to come mm. home, and the thing, something which has been in the news has been the minimum wage. Uh, Tura Flavel is saying $16 should be the minimum. Nobody can live on $13.75, which has been put up to. I've had the announcement the government is looking at a $0.25 cent increase, and he's saying this is just not good enough. And mm. I, I guess this debate will go on forever and a day. Mm. Um, is, I, I guess it's hard for us to understand Invercargill because Invercargill is a place where you can live a little bit more cheaply. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have to drive so far to work and places and stuff like that like they do in Auckland. But uh, $13.75, I mean, is it realistic? Oh, it's just crazy. It, look, I, you know, I, I, I was really inspired last week when I heard um, about the living wage. Mm. You know, I'm bringing that in where, um, you know, people on minimum need to live on $20 an hour. And, and you know, the, nice. and that the companies should be encouraged if they can afford to to actually pay their, you know, their cleaners and their, you know, the people who are on the minimum wage a living wage. And I just thought that was such a fantastic idea because there would be so many organisations and corporations out there that actually could do it. Um, what what really worries me about people living on the minimum wage and supporting a family on the minimum wage is um, the lack of opportunity that their kids get. In you know, in sport, um, you know, I think we're missing out on a, and education and all sorts of things. You know, we're missing out on a whole lot of people that have possibly got really amazing talents just because their parents can't afford that, to send them to, uh, you know, a swimming lesson or a sports camp or buy them, you know, the latest shop put shoes or, or whatever is you know required because they're just living on nothing. How much truth is there in that, in, in that thought that well, if companies have to pay this wage, well, they're not going to be able to handle it? That's the point. It's right making rules about companies, as a company owner, about what <laughs> I should pay people or what, so we can't afford it. If you have a look at, I'm not saying that you know, we pay many on the minimum wage, but if you had a factory and you employed 100 people on the minimum wage and the government turned it, you've got to pay them an extra 25 cents, an extra 50 cents. You know what's going to happen? They'll employ 90 people. Do you really think minute. that'll happen? Yeah, absolutely it will, because it comes down to a straight hard numbers game. You've got so much budget to produce this thing. There's but, but go, those that pay the minimum wage and have n multiple employees are, have a limit to how much they can pay people. Yeah, if that money goes turnover? up... What about the cost of the turnover? See, it costs money to, you know, to employ people, to train them up, to get... The, even on a minimum wage, yep. it costs a lot of money. So if you looked at the productivity and, and the retention mm. of your staff, wouldn't you be so much better off keeping it's really good staff? Absolutely, but it's about cash flow. On Tuesday next week, I've got to find so much money for, for wages. If that goes up by an incremental overnight, which it does, if I, I'm putting myself in a position, I've got to find that cash. And the only way to find that cash is to pay less people with the same money of cash they've got at my bank. It's okay, in six months' time, I might be able to generate some more money, but what do I do in the meantime? Mm. You know, support your you know, we, wonderful idea about social... <laughs> we, we, we have got a problem in New Zealand. I'm so sorry. No, I'm just saying, there's an alternative thing. Is that People sit in government and say, oh, everyone on 25 cents. Well, OK, you can pay all the government workers 25 cents more an hour or 50 cents or pay them $2 minimum wage. Set it as you like, but just be prepared that I, I can only spread my cash so far as a business owner, I'm sure others, and it will be between fewer people. And then you have achieved nothing. Having yeah. said that, we, you know, the statistics are showing that in New Zealand, the rich are definitely getting richer. That's people, I guess, who own, have got a lot of investments, big companies and what, and the poor are getting poor. How do we address that then? I mean, if we don't address it by legislation, how do we address it? And it's by a considerable amount. I mean, we're talking billions of dollars here. And the rich, seem, the, oh, the wealth seems to be getting concentrated into the hands of fewer and fewer people. Mm. How do we address that, Tom? Well, you don't have the mass employment jobs you used to have. That's... That's part of the problem. Mm -hmm. You don't have the big factories with the hundreds of people. But what you do do is, but you've got, if, if, if a government wants to change that kind of thing, they have to look at, say, the rail factory in Dunedin. 
taking all the work away and buying the Chinese mm -hmm. ones because, mm -hmm. okay, it saves some money. It keeps China happy that we spend a bit of money with them. Mm -hmm. But we could have employed all those people. And, you know, and it you know, would have trickled down. So there's a way of, and, and, mm -hmm. you know, okay, they're not hugely paid jobs, but they're, they're quite a skill. Well, you don't a skill we don't want to lose. pay someone $1.1 million dollars for a state-owned enterprise to as, run... As a bonus? The, no, as a salary. That was a oh, salary, a salary one, $1.1 yeah. You don't... It is I mean, ridiculous. That $20 million in bonus that went to solid energy over the last few years. Yeah, that, that is despicable. It is. It is. It is. It's yeah. despicable. And a company losing money. If they'd made yeah. $150 million a year and they want $20 million in bonus, we'll live with that. My yeah. still, <laughs> greedy. <laughs> still greedy. Still, still greedy. Yeah. Yeah. I know we're revisiting this topic. It's still I know. Say, <laughs> I don't, I don't care. Can't let it go. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> $20 million. Well, I, there was a select committee in the UK and, and the, the guy was squirming in his chair explaining how one of the bankers their bonus mm. scheme and it was like you know what I don't know what the numbers were he's on two Hacks million pounds a year and mm. bonus of double his wage was his bonus and they had an extra treble wage it was like six or seven times and the, the, the guy doing the questioning was saying am I hearing these numbers am I hearing these numbers mm. am I getting them right because this is you know agreed to the worst extent it oh is. he didn't take them all he said he didn't take them all <laughs> still had six million pounds or something <laughs> where was the board in this because the board uh, should be controlling the salaries of these high, so high racial people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, yeah. For, just for a minute. Just right. <laughs> I mean, where was the board? <laughs> <laughs> the, the board is appointed by the government, so the government can't wipe its hands of it. No. They appoint the board, so the board allows yes. these things. Hang on a minute. And those board mm. members, where yeah. are they going next? They're going into more directorships? Yes, right. well, actually, and they, to do the same thing again? They resign as soon as things yeah. get yeah, scary. They, they did yeah. resign, didn't they? Mains Hill? Yeah. Uh, Mains Hill resigned. Mains that's right. Gone on the Friday and receivership on the Saturday. And you see them turning up somewhere else. Mm -hmm. They are clearly incompetent. Yeah. We are talking about Jenny Shipley yeah, here, aren't we? <laughs> among others, among <laughs> others. It's not the yes. sole responsible, but no, yeah, they no, all true. played their part. But yeah. you know, they, how do they get on the director? Ex politicians oh, no. who didn't have any qualifications oh, she, beforehand. She is a she very clever, done. very clever person, but yeah, she should resigned on Friday. <laughs> 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 very smart. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that exemplifies. <laughs> Sorry, coming like twenty-four hours. <laughs> Don't you think though the trickle-down thing? I mean, they were talking about trickle-down. Okay, reduce the the tax for the, the more wealthy. Etc. Etc. Those of us, and we're all more highly paid, reduce that tax, and it will trickle down. Or does it trickle down more quickly if you give those on a lower wage more money? Because they, they are going to spend it at the supermarket, hopefully mm. on vegetables mm. and things like that. They are going to buy clothes for it and just a few things for kids. They'll send the kids to the movies, maybe or something. Isn't it going to trickle down a lot more quickly because it's got less distance to fall? Mm. That's what I would have thought. You did, well, job mm. creation for me. Yeah, talking about their factory, okay, it would have been cheaper to buy them out of China, those those trains. Mm. Yeah, there was a saving, and maybe there's a there's political gain too to, you know, we're going to mm. spend some money in China and you spend some money with us. Who knows? I don't know about mm. that deal. But sometimes you're going to have to say, okay, we don't want to make as much profit on this, we'll make it a smaller profit, mm -hmm. but we'll employ lots of people to do it. And, and we won't have to pay them the unemployment benefit. No, we can pay them the minimum yeah. wage. So you've got to deduct that. <laughs> yeah. well, that's right, yeah. If that's allowed. Mm. If that's allowed, indeed. Mm. We're going to go to another break. When we come back, we're going to do topics of interest. So stick with us, because our topics of interest are interesting. We'll see you soon. Welcome back to the newsroom. Before we do topics of interest, we're just going to have a little think about the cabinet reshuffle. I, I take it back. The shadow <laughs> cabinet reshuffle. <laughs> Alison, do you think really, I, I know that David Shearer ha has had to um, reshuffle his cabinet. Has he got some people in the front bench now who are really going to make a difference? You know, there's going to be more attack on the government. Are we going to see more vibrancy? Are we going to see them more in the news? Are we going to see more questioning the House? Has he got the right people there? Um, well, you know, to, to start with, it's like decks on the Titanic, deck chairs on the Titanic, isn't it? It doesn't matter where you put your deck chair for the best view, it's all going down, I think. But having said that, um, bringing Annette King back in to the front, his front bench is, uh, I think, a very, very good idea because mm -hmm. she's strong. She's a really honest, strong person. You know, she's done pretty well for a dental nurse, really, but she's... Um, a very yeah, intelligent dental nurse. She is. She's mm -hmm. a fabulous person. But... Um, you know, at the end of the day, the opposition has got to be really, really strong. They've got to be almost as strong as the government because they've got to keep the government in check. And if and if our opposition had any teeth at all, you know, people like Hickey Parata would not be there anymore because they, they're not any opposition at all. I don't know how he's going to reshuffle to get any teeth in there. Mm. Um, maybe Jacinda Ardern. I mean, she's a really up-and-coming um, young politician, but... 
That's what they keep telling us. Yeah. The most uninteresting oh. news story of the entire month is the thing is, is <laughs> naming it? a shadow cabinet, and, and it's it is also out of date because like in the old days you know. <laughs> when there were two parties, you could have one on one matchups. But these people mm. won't end up in portfolios because if you if you get in, you have to do deals with all the other parties and give away half those cabinet positions anyway. Mm. Particularly the strength mm. of the Greens. Mm. It, it, absolutely, and you you just need some strong people who can talk on a number of subjects. Mm. Know, like New Zealand First don't have a spokesperson. Well, they might have, but Winston does all the talking. <laughs> You're just going to have some people well informed by their people to, to represent you on a number of subjects. You go down the street in six months' time and ask anyone to name the shadow minister of oh, anything. No. You wouldn't oh, know. No. And we used clue. to know. We used to we know. Used to know when two eight years system. ago, I used to know who yep. was who at the zoo. Yep. Not anymore. Don't know. And even John Key lately, I have to say. Um, in the last couple of weeks, have you noticed that he sounds really bored with his job? He, he hasn't got the you know, jolly edge he used he to have hasn't. yet. He's, he's got he the might be the voted the best looking <laughs> Prime Minister we've had. I don't know if that's anything to go by when no, you I'm think of the ones in the past. Easy, but, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, he, right. just, not a pretty list. he just doesn't seem to have any passion. <laughs> nah. um, you know, he doesn't really get gutsy about what he's talking about. He just kind of very blandly ask, answers the questions. He's not really, um, he is under pressure because of the MOP system, thank goodness. If he mm. wasn't, he'd be cruising in at the moment. Because poor old Dave Jira. This is another case of someone trying to be something they're not, and that's yeah. charismatic. I, know. I think he's got. You know, he came guy. out after Christmas yeah. and he did all this rah rah thing and he looked yeah. the most. He looked the worst, act, worst acting ever. No Oscars there. It's got to come uh, out naturally, no. doesn't it? It, it yeah. does. Yeah. And, and he's being yeah. obviously somebody's trying to train him. So go out there and be you know, rah rah and get out there. Yeah. And, he, and he's trying his best. And he's like the Bill Rowling, Bill English, and all mm. those people who tried to be something. You know, the yeah. good politicians and clever people, but they're just not the charismatic leaders that people vote for. That's because right. Because they inspire. Yeah. They're inspiring. Not inspiring. You might be functional. And might be efficient, they might be clever. And a very, you know, uh, and a very good person. Oh, absolutely and wonderful got a person, lot of probably. passion, but... And that's part of the reason he isn't charismatic, because yeah. he's a nice bloke. Yeah. I like charisma, <laughs> charismatic people, if you think of history, uh, uh, oh. uh, felons. And <laughs> difficult, <laughs> difficult to get on with, um, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. And uh, we can go look mm. back through some of our prime ministers, you know, the tough, strong people. Yeah. I don't think people would have described Helen Clark as being the, the yeah. easiest person to work no. with. Rob Modine, uh, uh, he was David the most Longley, very passionate, yeah, that's right. very passionate, but, but not, not necessarily no. likable. But in charge, no. in charge. Yes. Everybody knew who the boss that's was, right. and uh, once the boss made a decision, it was very difficult to change it. Yeah. And that is the kind of person who's going to succeed as the prime minister. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it works the other way. Charismatic people, Napoleon and yeah. Hitler, and they, of some form, obviously won people over, mm. not with their ability, but with their ability to fire them up. Yes. There is a yeah. place for those people with ability. It's probably not the front person, I think, Tom. Um, yes, that's right. It's like the two I see. Bill yeah. English didn't yeah. work as yeah. the that's right. you know, in, in his position. Probably very good right hand man, just the guy you want yeah. to do all the do the labour. The work. work, all, all the, the dirty work. work. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a show. That's what it is. So there's our analysis of the shadow cabinet. We're going to go to topics of interest. Alison, we'll start with you. Well, I have got a topic of interest, and and you know, my mother wanted me to say something really positive, but Good. I just couldn't that's bring myself. No, I couldn't bring myself oh, I to. Oh, no, okay. I couldn't. Didn't find <laughs> there is something that's really <laughs> annoying me, and it's almost a topic of no interest anymore, and that is the derelict schools around Invercargill, oh, nice. and and because it's so topical with Christchurch mm. at the moment, you know, I just say look out Christchurch, because if you get the same deal dealt to you as we have. You know, when you drive in from Dunedin and you hit Tay Street and you see, um, you know, Hawthorndale School and it's just, and actually I had a wee look around there today, I know it's mm. private property, so excuse me, but, um, you know, it's, all the windows are smashed, um, the grass is up to your knees, um, I think there might be squatters in there because I could see an electric jug and some teacups through the window. <laughs> but, um, it's probably the old headmaster. But you know, it's, a, <laughs> it's abandoned and it's rotting. And I know that, you know, um, Mayor Tim was really on the bandwagon about uh, two years ago um, saying to the Ministry of Education, for God's sake, you can't leave these schools rotting away in our, in our town. There's about four or five of them now, um, Clifton, uh, Invercargill. And, and they all seem to be owned by private, they're all private property now. So who, who owns them? I know the Seventh-day Adventists have bought one of them and are going to turn it into a church but you know that was sort of um, on the table 18 months ago mm. um, god I'm sure they'd get the council approval through pretty quick if they tried I hard guess enough. I like any other private you know? property now aren't they? But, but that's such a waste of land and they just look so bad and it just worries me that Christchurch now are going to have how many of these schools? Yeah. You know and they sure. won't bowl them they'll just close them up and that'll be it. 
or, or, or sell them in situ. And you know, if exactly, and if you have got real estate around those properties, um, you know, it just is a bad look. It'd be really hard. The to challenge for any city, really, isn't? It? I mean, you yeah. know, they, the, the councils, um, the councils probably want the place to look better. They yeah. don't own the property. They charge rates to the property, and yeah. if things get really der derelict and unsafe, they can move in. But what do they do otherwise? The ministry sold them. Perhaps yes. rather foolishly, maybe they should Although have Surrey the Park's button. a good example though, isn't it? Because it's turned into the Murahiku Young Parent Centre. And it looks great, it's got mm. the crash there. I mean it looks still owned by the ministry, you see. Mm. Yeah. 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 So that, no, that, I, that's I just you know, that's that's my real bugbear mm. at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Oh, let's hope we see some change. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we have got some change coming up, up the road. I see they're, they're finally working on the intersection of Tay Street and uh, Racecourse Road there. Is that oh, around about? Yes, yes. Oh, look, there's, oh, there's, there's cones in the way and there's things yes, to drive it's around. Stout. It's going to be yeah, good. The, 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 the chess men are being shifted around. Yes. <laughs> to you, Tom. Yeah, I've I got three, three very quick ones. Um, we should be talking about Sesame Street in order to have a constant theme. Because we had Oscar yes. Pretorius, the okay. Oscars, and we should have Oscar the Grouch. We? <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to. I've actually got a couple, a couple of ones. Um, check out Project Glass. Um, it's a Google project where it's a camera built into your glasses, voice activated, to take really high quality video and transfer it onto your Facebook and website by just telling it. No way. It's working at the I moment. Agree. Have a look at it. It's fantastic. Project the vision Glass. is great. Right. So you get. I mean, it's the way of the future. Obviously, we saw a little bit of ref cam the other day, but it's um, we're now seeing you could walk around the streets and take. It's going to be quite intrusive, but it's very clever technology. Actually, that frightens me a little bit. What technology? No, no, no. <laughs> Someone you know videoing yeah, with, no. it, with their glasses. Yeah, so anybody with glasses. And it's, oh, I'm not happy about that. <laughs> and it's a tiny wee little camera. It could be done very discreetly. Yeah. Oh, There's going to no. be some privacy issues. I can tell you that now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the second one, I want to tell Gareth Morgan to go away. I uh, haven't had a go about Leave this, my cat alone. this cat business. He's just oh. just because you made money. I don't want to hear your opinion on all the right. on soccer teams, which you've obviously ruined, uh, and and cats. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> basic understanding of how pets work. I mean, are you yeah. worried about? It's a, unfortunately it's a survival of the fittest, and there's lots of introduced species of animals, and so. But for all the good they do, leave them alone. I mean, I, my cats. When I moved onto a property here, there was uh, developed a, a raw piece of land. It was run over by mice and rats. Mm. The cats killed them in three months, wiped them out. Yeah. So killing cats, uh, rats and mice will be all right, but not birds. It Do doesn't know, work I, like that. I know? live in Otatara, so I live near the native bush, and my cat has never, ever caught a native bird. Yeah. Sparrows, uh, you know, and lots right. of mice and lots of rats, thank God. But you know, that's my partner right. calls himself the gamekeeper as he gets mm. them off of the deck. That's what we do. They actually, yeah. But never the native birds because they don't come down to the ground. No. They stay we'll, high we'll up wait in the for the ecologists. No. We'll wait for the ecologist's point of view on the economy and see how he responds. Right. <laughs> okay. Because he's, he's certainly, um, he is certainly putting his foot in somebody else's territory. There's no question about it. And my third one, very briefly. Very brief. And it's really yeah, good news seconds. for people because there's been a big study and it worked out that Spider-Man's web if it was real and magnified up into human size, yeah. could in fact stop a train. As Amazing. in the movie. They've worked it out. Somebody has done a th thesis oh, on I feel a better case. person for knowing that. Thank you, Tom. Uh, it's, it's just handy. <laughs> if there's Spider-Man, it becomes I a real thing. I did know that those trains are amazing and, and strong. And he turns up, let him do his thing. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Spider-Man. Yeah. It's, it's true. It's true. Right on the dot. We've run out of time. Thank you very much to the panel tonight. Alison Young, Tom Conroy. Thank you. And uh, be listening again in a couple of weeks' time when we come back and talk to you about some more news stories. Ka kite no. We'll see you later.